Hey everyone, this is Tracy Friedlander. You're listening to Crushing Classical, redefining a thriving classical music career. Welcome to my new series, The Crushing Classical Hot Seat, where I put musicians who work with me in the hot seat. We talk about what they're creating and how they're crushing classical. And we work on audience building and business in real time. It's a peek behind the curtain at Crushing Classical in two ways. You get to see what people are creating and how they're crushing classical. And you get a glimpse at how I work with people. On today's hot seat, you'll hear Claire Galloway Weber, soprano, French diction expert, and program creator working on her upcoming launch and reveal of her new program, Core Singer Essentials. We talked about Claire's opinions on creating your own career in the opera world, age limits and the problems with those and how they limit young singers, and about writing process, the writing process and creating valuable content for your page and for your social media, and so much more. To find out more about Claire's upcoming free training on September 25th through 26th, as well as her upcoming program launching in October, check out the links in the show notes. Also, if you're interested in learning about the power of interviews in audience building, don't miss my free upcoming training this Wednesday, September 23rd at 12 noon Eastern. The sign up link is also in the show notes. Let's get started. Welcome, Claire. Welcome to the Hot Seat Series on Crushing Classical. Hey, we're live. Oops. No, so, I the sound on. Sorry, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is so exciting. I'm so thrilled to have you here. Um, this series is a series of hot seat um, interviews, essentially hot seat kind of live coaching, um, you know, moments in time. And Claire is Claire is in my online Empire Blueprint program right now. And what you've created, Claire, is just so exciting. This is the second round you've been working with me and there's so many things you've built in the last, like, I would say three months. Why don't you tell me a little, tell us a little bit about what you're, what you're working on now and what you've already created. Sure. Yeah. So, um, the first round that we worked together, I created my first program, which was a summer French fiction crash course, which was super fun. It was six weeks long. I got to work with nine amazing participants. And then I moved on to um, my core foundations boot camp. I'm a singer, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, I should have mentioned that. <laughs> Sorry. And it was all about getting really physically connected to your singing because it's good for our mental health. It's good for our sound. It's a good way to really connect to who we are and to our full voice. So that was a three week boot camp, which was super intense and so much fun. And all of that has led into now me launching a six month program starting in October that's going to combine a lot of those things, diction and voice lessons and body connection. But it's also going to be working towards showing people how we can create our own career path and opportunities. It's not all defined by the industry as it exists. And now that it's changing so much, it is time. So I'm really, really pumped about it. Hey, you and I agree on that big time. Amen. Yes, we do. (laughs) Yeah. So, and you know what? I love that you just said that about careers. Um, And you just, you just put out a post a little, not too long ago that, that went viral somewhat. Yeah. What about that post that you wrote? Yeah, it was so funny. So this is something I've thought about for a long time. It was a post about age limits in the opera industry specifically. Um, Basically, singers, we usually go to grad school and then we're supposed to move on to young artist programs. Right. And those young artist programs almost always have an age limit, whether it's 28, whether it's 30, some of them are 32. And often there's even an imbalance between whether you are a female or a male singer. There are different ages that they list. Really? Yeah. It's, oh, let me guess. The guys get to be older. Yes, they do. <laughs> so, and I think some of that comes from wanting to have more male singers because there are fewer of them. Mm. So widening the opportunity base. And some of that comes from the physiological ages when our voice is mature. Right. But so much has changed in our industry and so much has changed just in the way that we all live our lives that it's become really untenable and really unfair. 
and it's blocking a lot of people out from amazing opportunities and it's chasing people away from the industry, quite frankly. And so it's something I've thought about for a long time. I've seen discussed and during the beginning of the quarantine, a lot of us were in what I call it the burn it all down phase. <laughs> <laughs> That's and great. So, and so I wrote that post and kind of put it off to the side. I was like, I'm probably not gonna post this. I was just kind of ranting. Um, but someone, a good friend of mine posted about something that had happened age related a few years ago. And she posted it maybe a week or two ago. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to post that because this is something that people need to talk about. And it just exploded. Everyone wanted to talk about it. And it turned out there was a panel about it the following week that another wow. program was leading. So it's leading to actually productive conversations, which makes me so happy. I think that's the reason that we should be posting what we post and being honest and vulnerable in our stories. Oh my gosh. Yes. And that's why I love teaching what I teach because... Yeah. You can see it in real time and you can't know what's going to happen until you actually publish. You exactly. know, you can't know in advance. Are people going to like this? Are they not going to like this? Are people going to hate me after this? Right. But, <laughs> but when you publish something that's a little bit more controversial, I mean, I'm sure there's other people who are like, Claire, just relax about it. Or right. I don't know. You never know. <laughs> right. And it's OK that that that's a possibility because um, that's how you you start a lively conversation. That's what that's how it gets more exciting. That's when people share things that start a conversation. So one yeah. of the things that scared me the most when I first started was, Ooh, what if I post something that people don't like and they don't like me? I think that's a really big fear a lot of times in classical musicians and opera singers because you just want to you want to be well liked so that you have opportunities. But I feel like, like you said, as the times are changing and the career paths are changing, you don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to be, you, you don't have to fit this mold or say things that only, you know, the powers that be would approve of. And that's actually really freeing and liberating. Totally. And I think part of the fear of posting things that are a little bit incendiary is that not necessarily that your colleagues are going to say, oh, what's she talking about? Because you kind of know what your colleagues think and then they yeah. can't agree with you for the most part. It's more what if the people that run the company see this and they don't want to work with me and they blacklist me. Right. At a certain point, you know, what we have talked about so much in like audience building basics and the online empire blueprint is at a certain point, like if companies are saying that and heads of companies are saying that, are they people you really want to be working with? Right. Like Probably you get not. a choice. Yeah. Right. That's the thing. So understanding that you have a choice, you have a role, you can take control of your own career. Absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. I love that. That's so inspiring. And so you've been able to see that as you started posting things that, and you know what, that's another thing I tell people a lot of times, like sometimes you'll write something and it won't, it won't, you're not ready to post it and that's okay. Like let it sit there, let it marinate. Yeah. And then, and then at some point you might, you know, just be ready to do it. And that's the best time when you feel good about it too. Totally. And sometimes I've had a lot of conversations with people worrying about, um, is it perfect? Is it polished enough? And at a certain point, I feel like a lot of times, especially over this quarantine, I've either been super busy and just want to get something posted. And so I'm like, who cares if it's perfect? I need to get it out. Yeah. <laughs> Tuesday, my technique Tuesday needs to go out. So I'm not exactly. going to edit it. It's just going out. And um, it's a really good way to just get over that feeling. And it's going to pay off dividends in the way that we all perform and the way that we all create together too. A hundred percent. And so like, with the, with, <laughs> I love the technique Tuesday thing because you've given yourself sort of a deadline, essentially. Like yeah. I, <laughs> Tuesday, I'm like, oh. Okay. Yeah, as soon as you tell the people, now it has to happen. So that's a great way to make yourself do things. It's another, yeah. probably another reason why people shy away from, I mean, I know that I'm like, okay, if I say it's happening, that means I got to do it, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's a great way to keep you on your toes and everything. And so you just mentioned um, that feeling of perfectionism and not wanting to post because, you know, everyone kind of breaks through that barrier, especially in my programs. It's sort of like, no, you just got to start pumping out content. But what about with your programs? Like, that's another thing that stops people is, oh, it's not perfect. Oh, I didn't have a video editor or I don't have, like, if you start going down the rabbit hole of all the ways that you can start creating something new in your, in your career, 
you might never do it because, oh, I, I read that somebody said I have to have a course on some platform and, oh, that costs 150 a month. Oh, and then plus I need a funnel and I need this and all these like things you've never heard of. So tell me about how you've been able to just create and start because that's my favorite kind of client and participant is someone who's just like, let's get this thing out there. Let's, let's, let's enroll do. people. Let's make money. Let's help people. Let's, you know, all the things. So tell me a little bit about that process. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a really important point because yeah, we worry so much like, well, this isn't in place. And it's not the top quality. And you know, we compare ourselves to the, you know, juggernauts of the field. Yeah. Um, but so I will say that I definitely started off in a safe place for myself with the summer French diction class because I had just finished teaching my semester of French. I was really on top of all of it. It's something I'm super comfortable talking about in almost any context. Mm -hmm. um, so I made sure that that material was very comfortable for me so that I could really focus on all of the learning part and the learning curve of like, oh God, how do I advertise this? Yeah. How do I set up payment? How do I set up contracts? How do I make sure that the participants who are investing not only their money, but their time and their energy are going to get out of it what I promise they're going to get out of it. Right. Um, and so, yeah, at a certain point, it was kind of learning on the fly. But as long as I felt comfortable with it and the clients and the participants were ready to go, then mm -hmm. it was like, okay, things are going to change. We're going to have to improvise here and there but the base elements are there and I know that the content's going to be amazing and that they'll have transformations. Yeah. That's, that's the most important thing. For sure. Absolutely. So I think everyone, a lot of times, not everyone, but a lot of people get stuck in the, Oh, it has to look a certain way. It has to, you know, and really what it, all that needs to happen is you need to be in a place where you can contribute and create an awesome experience and exactly help people have an awesome transformation and that, yeah. and that experience. So since this is a hot seat, I want to talk about what you need to help me, my help on, if anything, like, um, like if it's about posting or something with your upcoming program or anything like that. And you, of course, please plug your program. Yeah. We'll put, we'll put the information, <laughs> like I'll, I'll go ahead and, you know, after this interview is over, we can put a link to all the stuff you have coming up as well. Awesome. Super cool. Yeah, I have a couple questions today. So one of them is, I have now secured a decent number of pretty awesome guests for this October program. Um, and so I'm trying to decide, I want to lay it out on my website. I don't want to overwhelm people with all the details of when it's going to be what they're going to cover. But I want to lay it out so that they can see who the guests are, and just like a bullet title of what they're going to be talking about. And then later on, it can be more detailed. So what I'm trying to decide right now is how to lay them out and does it really matter? So, you know, should it be based around what kind of subject they're working on or what kind of class they're presenting, you know, a master class versus a body session versus a career building workshop? Mm -hmm. Or should it be chronological based by date? So I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. I love that question because what I would, what I would, how I would approach this is think about um, the people who are your ideal clients that will be coming into the program. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can, can sort of design it as, you know, like a body, mind, spirit kind of idea Ooh, where like it's like, you know, where you're like, if you hear the, if you hear the words body, mind, spirit, you're going to be like, oh, I totally get where this is going. You know, and then you might read the body section and go, oh, I'm going to learn X, Y, Z. There's going to be yoga. There's going to be body mapping. There's going to be breathing stuff. Mind is might be related to career stuff. Spirit might be, you know, and maybe you don't use those exact words, but you use some kind of category where you're thinking about like the whole singer, because essentially that's what you're doing. It, you're, isn't your program called? The whole singer or something like that. Uh, yeah, core singer essentials. Right. Okay. So that's like the essentials of what and the core a core is is really the root or like the foundation of everything, right? And yeah. so in order to have like a complete person, a complete singer, you you would want to have body stuff taken care of, career stuff taken care of. And with career comes mindset and how you're thinking of different things and how you're putting yourself out there in a different way 
in like this new way of thinking of careers. And then of course you have the technique stuff and the things that you need to be a really polished, awesome singer. Mm -hmm. So you have like the different categories that create like the holistic person uh, that yeah. kind of represents the transformation. So I what I would do is find words sort of like body, mind, spirit, but not necessarily those words. It just is a person that popped into my head when I think yeah. of like, transformational experiences and think of, think of those words. And then I would, I would categorize the guests under what category they are. And so that way, when the people read, the potential clients read that page, they get a feel for like, oh, this is gonna help me in all the areas I need help with to become you know, the singer that I wanna be. Yeah, I love that. And especially because there are so many added elements to what a normal training program would be because almost all of them are gonna have voice lessons and coachings and diction. Yeah. So much more to this that has to do with, like you said, connecting to your body, connecting to your core, who you are as an authentic, unique human being and how to make your career around that. I love that. So with the title of the, of the course of the program, you can also add a tagline. And I do have one. It's okay. um, the stage for your authentic voice. That's great. Yeah. That was because, a friend of mine that suggested that. And I was like, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, because authentic voice is like your literal voice, but also like what you say in the world and who you are as a person. And, you know, this will be a little of my opinionated self coming out right now. But I feel like, you know, at least in my experience going through the, the university situation and two degrees, I didn't feel like um, that was ever broached, like who I was as a person, so I was going to, you know, I've been complaining, you know, I'm in Mexico um, and I took four years of Spanish in high school. And then when I got to college, I was allowed to take a, a, an exam to see where I would place. Yeah. Or they would say, guess what? You tested out of your requirement for Spanish and you don't need to take any more Spanish. And yeah. I, and I did that. I didn't have a person in my life, like someone who could think ahead for me since I was only 19 or whatever yeah. and say, Hey, you might want to actually be fluent in, in this language. And now is the time to do it. And why didn't, you know, like in a u traditional university setting, they're just like, you need this, 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 and this to graduate. And it's all knowledge based. It's all brain stuff. Get this knowledge into your brain, regurgitate it for a test and we'll give you a piece of paper. There's no like who you are as a person. There's nothing deeper. And so that's what I love about how, this education system is being disrupted somewhat by by musicians and singers like yourself who are creating things out there. And I'm yeah. not saying like they have to replace the university if no, that's not what you want to do, but right, it can definitely be in addition to, and it should mm -hmm. be things started to incorporate started to be incorporated into the existing education system because. You know, I mean, I've talked to a number of people, including some of the people who participated in your courses about how our mental and spiritual journey really isn't addressed. No. And, um, you know, if you think about what we do as musicians and, you know, actors and anyone else who's in the arts, we're constantly putting ourselves out there, ideally as our most vulnerable, authentic selves and getting rejected for it all the time. And yeah. no, they're just like, buck up, keep going. All the no's mean a yes sometime. And it's like, fair enough, but also my spirit's being crushed. <laughs> like, what do I do? hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, it's so true. It's like, you learn all this technical stuff and then you pour your heart out and then you get crushed. It's like, but just keep on moving. Just try again. Like, let's just ignore that. And honestly, I think over time people get beaten down. They really do. Yep. And maybe that's why a lot of people are just accepting, oh, here's here's what you got, take it or leave it. And they think that's really their only choice for a career. Like, yeah. oh, I have to say, okay, um, I can only be this, this certain age, like, and don't fight it. Or just accept that this is this gig is all that's available to you. You know, if you start to maybe heal those things and, and just address them even then what else is possible? So this is great. Yeah. yeah, and I it was interesting on that age limits post, a friend of mine, Gwendolyn Kuhlman, posted you know, a response and she was just like, yeah, it wasn't until I actually aged out of all of those programs that I sat back and thought, well, what do I actually care about singing and what do I wanna say with my singing? Mm -hmm. It's not something that we're taught to think about or asked to think about 
and we don't have the time to, cause we're running from audition to audition where we're thinking about, okay, what's, what do I present that puts me in the best light in this company's eyes? Yes. In our own eyes and like, who cares? <laughs> like, do I really care about singing Carabino? And if I do, how do I make Carabino mine and me? And how do I come through in this story that's 200 years old, you know? Totally. Oh my gosh, that's such a great point. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So is there anything else that, that I can help you with? Yeah. So um, the other thing I wanted to ask about, I mean, I could ask about logistical letters of agreement and stuff, but I'd actually rather yeah. ask about how to, I think this will be a helpful question for multiple people, not just myself, organize the advertising as I go forward. Cause I have a few things that I'm advertising for, right. Or promoting or just talking, mm -hmm. working towards. And so one of those things is of course, this, this big course that's starting in October. And that's one of the things that I definitely want to feature. But as elements of that, I also have this happy hour series, Sing Venture Chats, that's every other week, which actually is going to be a part of the course, but it's also just a way for people to come together and talk about a lot of these subjects with different yeah. people who are creating their own paths in the industry, and it's awesome. Um, and then a few of my own like performing opportunities and things like that. Like for instance, this past week, our first episode of the podcast Opera Company project that I was involved in came out. And so I'm like, how do I make sure that that's out there, but doesn't get buried. And then my other programs don't get buried. So any advice on that would be more than that's more. a great question. There's so many opportunities. There's so many things that you're creating and in, in real yeah. time and everything. Mm -hmm. So you have your email list, right? Yes. And I do okay. have them sort of segmented out here and there as much as I can. Right. I would, I would make sure that you never do the thing that I think a lot of people think you need to do, which is send an email with all the things you're doing. This is coming okay. up. Make sure you join the Sing Venture Chats. I've got a six month program coming up. I have a, you know, this, that, and the other podcast because it's too much for people and they're like, oh, wait, what? Like, and especially in an email, which is my favorite form of communication past social media. Social media is important, but email is so much powerful, more powerful. So I love talking about that in my program. But um, when you send an email and you can send an email more than once a week, some people send emails every day of the week, you know, mm -hmm. and what I would do is make things story based and share one thing. So how did you know, if you take the podcast, for example, you, this is for email and a story. You could do the same thing on a post. Did I? No, I said story. I meant to say post. Um, for a social media post or an email, you can you, you tweak it a little bit based on where you're where you're communicating. But um, say you want to promote the podcast episode. And there's a story behind how you know the person who started the podcast or what this whole podcast is about or you know, if there's something interesting that will be cool to read and will will invite them in to experience a story. Yeah. And then at the end, say, you could check this out. Here's a link, you know, tell your friends or whatever. Or or at the end, you invite them to, to share something with you that that is related to that story or the or what happened on the podcast or something. Yeah. So you could do that like just one at a time and you can email and say, now you're gonna talk about your program. One great thing that would be, I would I would think you could create a post, and this is always happening with clients and just even with conversations that I have with people, I'm always like, that could be a post, as you know, I do that all the time. <laughs> um, this conversation, if re you rewind it a little bit, I mean, you just said a whole bunch of really awesome stuff about um, like, the whole holistic self of, of you, you know, maybe you share a story about how your experience was that there were things missing and, and that you've noticed as a teacher that over and over you're dealing with your poor students who get crushed and then, and then like, there's no support around that or, you know, just some kind of powerful post or story that's related to something that you're going to teach in the program so that they can relate to, People in promotion, they need to relate to something that they need versus 
hi, I'm Claire. I have a thing coming up. I want you to look at it. It's going to be awesome. There's going to be this training, this training, this training, this training. This is how much it costs. This is when it starts. Like that stuff will all, that all can get sorted after they're like, Claire, I need what you're doing. You have to just tell me how I can sign up. And then, you know, like they are more interested in, in what, how they can help themselves for a specific thing than they are about the details of when the program starts. So totally. just reaching out to people, whether that's a post or an email with some kind of story or some pain point that you, that you know will be covered or, you know, worked on in your program and make a post or just like, and you could talk about that post and how you shared it and it went viral. And clearly this is a, conversation that is on fire in the world of opera singers yeah. and you know this is something that we're going to cover in my program because we're going to talk about career paths and how you can really forge your own path so that you don't have to care about that anymore because it's irrelevant to you yeah you can say see you later have fun on that i don't care that i'm 29 it's okay right. or 49 or whatever yeah, and that's that's part of the reason I'm so excited about these sing venture chats, especially the ones that are coming up the next two. This mm -hmm. Friday, my friend Elise is going to be talking to people about um, why we compare ourselves to other people on social media all the time and what it does to our psyche and to our singing directly. Wow. And then I'm hoping to have my friend Carl DuPont come in and talk about rejection and resilience in the next one. So, yeah, it's all these things that we all need to talk about, but that are also leading into the big sort of tenets of this program in October. So yes, I'm really excited. You know what? I've, I've just been thinking about how, you know, so many of my clients have started interview series. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been turned into podcasts, but a lot of them are just as simple as like signing up for StreamYard or going Instagram live or having a Zoom feed that you share the link with some people. Like inter interviews are powerful. Yeah. And I think... I decided today, so I might as well say it right now, I'm going to do a free training about, about podcasting, interviewing, and the power of what that does for your building your audience and setting up the stage for what you do in the future. I, I mean, it, I just, it was one of those moments, those shower moments. Do you ever have those? Yeah. yeah. Where you get, like, <laughs> it's either driving or shower. That's that is what it is for me. I'm usually I swimming and I'm just like quietly swimming. myself and I'm like in the middle of a backstroke and I almost drown because I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> There's got to be some scientific reason for like your brain is is like doing something mundane that doesn't cause you to really concentrate. Maybe that's what it is. So maybe it goes into a stillness mode, and it's just yeah. Maybe there's wa waves. Maybe it's about the brain waves. Who knows? Yeah. If anyone listening knows what I'm knows the answer, just tell us in the comments. <laughs> Where's L? L probably knows. <laughs> I guess she does. Oh, that's awesome. So I think your your program is going to be incredible. I'm so um, excited about it. I would love for you to post, um, you know, everything that you want to, you know, everything that's coming up. Cool. Put a link in the comments. Yeah, definitely. I think I, I might be able to also copy that and put it in the description of this. Oh, cool. Once it's done and I can edit the thing, I think. But yeah. you can for sure put the, the links in the comments too. Awesome. Yeah, that informational page for the program is going to be updated soon with those guests like you were talking about and a bit more in detail and you can just book a trial lesson and a discussion with me. So fantastic. Claire is awesome. You got if you're a singer and you're watching this right now, you really have to find out more about this program. So, mm -hmm. so great. And let me just say that Tracy's amazing also. <laughs> I was, telling her the, I was telling her at the end of the first program that she unleashed my inner beast because I had all this like stuff I wanted to talk about about the industry but was too afraid to. And now I'm like, we need to talk about this because it needs to change. Yes. I love that so much. That is so inspiring. That's so great, Claire. I love that. I well, you know, sometimes I yell at you guys. Not not meanly, right? But I'm like, yeah, it's what? That little stuff that we need. Just a little gentle shove. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like you you just keep encouraging us to say, like, you know what you want to say and you know what your story is and you know it's impactful. So just stop being afraid of what other people think. Yes, exactly. There's nothing to be afraid of. A lot of times the people who don't agree with you are too scared to say anything. And so they'll just kind of slink off into the distance while the people who are inspired and motivated by what you're saying come to the forefront and then... It doesn't even matter what the people 
the naysayers are saying because they're just not even around you. I've said, I made a post one time and I said, it's, you're on, you're in another universe. It's not even a, another planet. Like you're not even on, you know, what's the closest planet to the earth? <laughs> Mars? I don't know. It's even further away than that. You're in a totally different universe with people who love what you're saying. And if the, if there's, if you get naysayers, that means you've just broken through like a barrier on audience building where you're, where you're making someone mad. And that's like actually something to celebrate, <laughs> but that's a whole other conversation. It doesn't feel like <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> I love it. That's oh. awesome. Claire, thank you so much for coming on today. And this is going to go up on my podcast as well. So you'll be anyone who's listening or sees this, but doesn't have time. It's going to be uploaded on the podcast as soon as possible. And you can hear it there too. So thanks so much, Claire. Thanks so much for having me.